Hello and welcome back today, ATP supporters around the world. It's the Katie Berry Show on ATP Report with Katie Hopkins, all the way from the United Kingdom. Welcome, Katie. Thank you very much indeed, Barry. Thank you for having me on. It's been another wild week. Let's jump right into it. This weekend, there is going to be the Million MAGA Rally. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's an amazing possibility that half of America is very upset and very confused about what happened on November 3rd. And because we do not have a president in the United States for the next term yet announced officially, contrary to what all the mass media has been rushing to announce, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands, or possibly more American supporters on their way to Washington, D.C. So, what do you think about it? What do you think is going to happen? They're going to be there to protest uh, the goofball counts in a number of states. And when I mean a number of states, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, uh, going north into Pennsylvania, way north into Michigan and Wisconsin. They are upset that nothing is firm because the numbers of fraud claims are going up literally exponentially. And while the MAGA rally happens, there's a F-U-C-K MAGA rally planned to protest. So much for reconciliation. What do you make of it? <laughs> I think from our side's point of view, Barry, I don't see it as a protest, you know, I, and, I, and I say that because I'm receiving images of people on planes coming over from California, uh, flying all across the states of your brilliant country to join in the rally. So the Million MAGA March. And I think it's just going to be glorious. I think it's going to be uplifting it's going to show our side at their very best. And I think it's just going to be a moment for our side to remember why we're so great, why we're the side to be on, and how we don't back down easily. So uh, from our point of view, I think it's less protest and more standing in support of the president and standing in defiance. And, and I just, I'm just so excited. I can't tell you, Barry, I'm so sad that I'm not there, but I'm so excited for everybody that is there and uh, all the individuals taking their time, spending their money um, to go and make this happen. I just think it's just such a brilliant thing and the media cannot ignore it. Well, the one thing the media is ignoring, Katie, uh, and I can tell you this because I'm devouring stories by the minute, uh, is the fact that this is not, and I mean that in capital 50 foot letters, this is not an election without controversy. Um, the numbers of fraud claims, the numbers of affidavits coming in are literally filling uh, truckloads of protest uh, information from people who have witnessed just disgusting violations of the law. And I mean, in every major state. Um, in Michigan alone, the former deputy attorney general of the state of Michigan, meaning second in charge of law enforcement for the entire state, has come out and said he personally, personally witnessed massive amounts of voter fraud. So the question is, if the various lawsuits don't have traction fast enough before the Electoral College has to be certified on a state-by-state -state basis, you and I discussed earlier today, there's another possible path to power for Trump to remain in office. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what could happen for the selection of the Electoral College members that are going to vote. What are your thoughts? So I think there is principles here in law, having read uh, through some of the back notes on this, Barry, um, that it is, uh, that does exist in federal law, the ability for the legislature to take back control where a decision hasn't been made. And fraud would be an example of that. So wherever a state has failed to make a choice on the day prescribed by law, 
the electors may be appointed on a subsequent day. And there is precedence for this. Uh, in the 2000s, Bush versus Gore ruling, a court majority affirmed that the state legislature's power to select the manner for appointing electors is plenary. It may, if it so chooses, select the electors itself. That sounds very dull and dry, but basically we need Republican state representatives to stand up, to man up, and to say that this election hasn't been called, the people have not made their choice, and to decide the electors themselves. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, from what I've seen, the evidence is overwhelming mm. that the legislatures in specific states, which I just mentioned, um, specifically Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin and Michigan ought to do that. You know, it's really amazing, Katie, that the mainstream media here goes to the election um, supervisor for each state and says on camera, you were in charge of the election in insert state here, like Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. Was there fraud? Well, of course the person's going to say no. It's their job to prevent fraud. But if you were a real honest reporter, and you went to the legislatures in each of these states, my goodness, the evidence is ridiculously overwhelming. And I would not be surprised and would probably support in at least three or four states, the legislatures taking back the authority to appoint the electors based on what they perceive would be mm -hmm. fair given the will of the people. And Katie, as you discovered, should they do that, the Electoral College upon voting would have a decidedly different outcome than it looks right now. Absolutely. And I think the question is, uh, will the state representative, the legislature, have the moral courage to do that? You know, do we have faith that Republicans have the backbone to make this happen. And, and we need, Americans need to be on at those uh, men and women to demand it of them. This needs to be taken back into control because this is about democracy. This is about the very belief in a democratic process. And currently 70, what, 72, 80 millions? Uh, 80 million Americans do not have any faith in democracy in America right now, I would argue. And, and I would agree with you. Uh, everybody I speak to, and the tremendous amount of feedback we get at ATP, it's not just that people are upset about the way things seem to be right now, but more importantly, that the abrogation of their democratic right has been stepped on in a huge way. So it's not just that sore losers are sore losers, it's my vote was taken away. The value that I place in our democracy has been diminished. Real quick question before we go. You told me that the narrative in Great Britain is changing and it used to be, hey, Biden won. And you told me, there's a news story in the British press. What is it? <laughs> they tried so hard. They tried so hard. Biden won. Look at Kamala. Oh, she's a woman and she's a VP. Oh, and she's, uh, you know, Asian, well, Indian, isn't it? The phrase that they like to go for. And then they didn't, they realized that hasn't stuck. People aren't that interested. They haven't been able to convince people. And it's swung now to, is Trump going to leave office? or is he going to stay? And they've started to discuss exactly what we've just been discussing about the possibility and the way that this could happen if the states take back control. It's so interesting. It's almost like the media tried to sell us Biden, but we weren't buying. And now they're having to come up with something more interesting, which is actually Trump might stay. I, I'm fascinated as a political scientist that Great Britain is more on the ball about our constitution and what rights the constitution gives 
more than we are here. You know, in the US, nobody talks about the constitutional rights of the legislature to possibly step in in regards to the Electoral College. They just can't understand why Trump hasn't already packed and ordered the moving van. And it's a totally different story on your side than our side. We'll see what happens in the next week. Thanks for joining us today with Katie and Barry. I want to remind our viewers that if they haven't subscribed to our text message alert system, please do that. Text the message truth to 88202 and push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to see all of our stuff on your cell phone absolutely free. For Katie and me, thanks for joining us today.